Should we do Matt Rife real fast? Let's do Matt Rife. That'd be a good highlight, right? I don't know nothing about Matt. I think it would do really good on TikTok. He's super popular there. Give it a try. He's very young guy. I noticed him on TikTok. I saw a few of his um crowd work TikToks. He's very fun. I mean, he's he's very good at improvisational comedy. I mean, the views are nuts. Look at this shit. 65 million on this crowd work video. Does anybody here have any autistic children? Do you really? Yeah. How old? Um, so he just turned four. He just turned four? What's, um, how far on the spectrum would you say he is? Is it, is it little by little or is he like... He's nonverbal. He's nonverbal. God, he got it. Yeah. <laughs> what's, his, what's his thing that he's really good at? Um, so he's hyperlexic. Hyperlexic, what's that? He's very, very good with numbers, shapes, colors. He's good with he's numbers, shapes, and colors. And colors. Fuck yeah, that dude about to rob a casino somewhere. <laughs> You're gonna be a very rich mom someday. There's no cons, bro. You don't gotta worry about him talking to strangers. You don't like talking to nobody. That's awesome. Congratulations. What is that? Something she drew. Fan art. You made that? Yeah. Are you kidding me? You drew this? Yeah. That's so cool. She drew this. Aww. Aww. This is so good. And you're verbal. Guys, this is really good, okay? <laughs> Fucking be nice, okay? This is, this is going top of the fridge. Yeah, so I think this is actually a really Fuck. great example to compare from where he came to why people are angry at him. <laughs> people have said that he, he had a heavy uh, women-based audience. True. The ladies loved Matt Reif. And you can see in this one, one of his most viral clips, this is from 2-9. Is that, that's what, like a year ago? Is that what it's saying? February. Yeah. Okay, or no. Yeah, okay, whatever. So, you can see he's like, he's being silly and he's making fun of like, you know, not really making fun of autism. He's doing a good job, I think, of skirting the line. I mean, here, this top comment's pretty good. It says, nailed this topic while still staying inoffensive, yet being still being Matt Rife. And you can see he's getting lots of love from the ladies, drawn in pictures and stuff. So this was kind of his persona, is that he was um, a ladies' man. I don't know if that's the right word, but that's the vibe. There's more of them. I mean, he's got a lot of these. That one had 65 million. This one has also 65 million. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Well, that's loyalty. <laughs> it's two minutes long. I'm not going to watch the whole thing. So he just got a Netflix special that I actually tried watching because I, I saw his clips and I thought, you know, let's see. Worth a shot? It, it, it was like trending on Netflix, the number two most popular TV show on that list, you know? Mm -hmm. so I was like, oh, fuck, okay. I personally didn't find it very funny. Um... But you know, comedy is definitely in the eye of the beholder, so I'm not I'm not one to like uh, take my opinion on that too too seriously. But um, I went to the internet and I saw people are actually quite upset over it. So yeah, he put out his spe Netflix special, Natural Selection. I didn't think it was funny. Has anybody liked it? I've just seen a lot of people angry about it. I, don't, I, don't I didn't know. watch it. I haven't seen it, but yeah, the backlash. I hadn't even heard of him. It, it, the that's... backlash was big enough that people like me that hadn't even heard of him were like, oh, damn, this guy is getting lit up right now. <laughs> that's what's so weird about this is that, like, he has become, and a lot of people don't know about him because I just found out about him a few months ago. He's so popular. Like, when he goes on shows, does podcast interviews, whatever, you're ta you're looking at like millions of views guaranteed. Mm. This man was a phenomenon, um, and and uh, well, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't seem he's getting top remarks for his stand up. I don't know if people even he was on Rogan recently, really. Mm -hmm. That probably got a lot of views, eh? I 
I'm not sure. How to check. I'll check on right now. On Spotify. Can you see on? Yeah, I don't know. I, no, not on. Uh, no. yeah. You can see the on, highlights, man. though. Good to see it. Yeah, you, you can see how the highlights did and get an impression. <laughs> but anyway, like I said, he's popular with with the ladies, and I don't think Rogue. Why is that? Um, I I mean I don't know. What am I a fucking psychologist? What am I a sociologist? <laughs> I don't know he's a ha- he's a honk. You know, I was kidding. He's a honk. What can you do? This was my ass. He's a honk. I mean, he's a honk. I guess I don't know. But he's he's also it's also not just his hunkiness. It's his you know his whole thing. Of course, yeah. So he begins his set with a joke uh, that goes something about how Baltimore is ratchet. He says, it's both Ratchet and the nicest place. You guys have to pick a lane. Here's the joke he said. And we couldn't get over the fact. They went to a restaurant and the hostess had a black eye. And here's the joke. We couldn't get over the fact that we're like, this is the face of the company. This is who you have greeting people. And my boy, uh, who I was with, was like, yeah, I feel bad for her, man. They should put her in the kitchen or something where nobody has to see her face. And I was like, yeah, but I feel if she could cook, she wouldn't have that black eye. Uh, but that, and then he one follow- of those, Okay, I should have seen where that was going. And, and, and then he follows it up, though, by saying, like, uh, oh, I'm just Archie seeing how Bunker. fun you guys are. Let's see, I'm just uh, I'm seeing, how, you know. Yeah. Hmm. So, again, it's the an major- old-timey joke. It is. That, is. that is a Jimmy Lee joke. Like, straight up. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> right? Like... Think of just think of that in his voice, and it, if she could, that's a, if she could cook, she wouldn't have that black eye. Right. Work with me. Work with me. I got my eye on you. Right. Yeah. Again, imagine the majority of people tuning in are are women, mm-hmm. and so I think that rub people wrong in the sense that one, it's not that funny. It's when you say it's an old timey joke, it's like something that we've heard. Yes. Before. Heard a million variations of that joke. And, and, and like, yeah. And we look back and be like, eh, kind of yeah. out of touch. But to bring that back is not, I don't know. I get, I don't get offended by, by stand-up comedy so much as when I see something like that, I'm like, it's just kind of hacky. Hacky, yeah. That's like, that's my thing with the trans things. And again, mm-hmm. I wish I got the opportunity to talk to mm-hmm. Whitney about this on the show. But... It's not, and I'm not trans, so it's not my place to say this is offensive or not. Right. But to me, when it's like I'm really another comedian on stage doing trans jokes. Like it's just so fucking hacky, bro. Yeah. Yep. Or just like how almost all comedians, like half their sets these days, are about how you can't tell jokes anymore. It's you moved, can't tell jokes huh? anymore. You can't tell jokes anymore. It was funny. It was interesting. Like ten years ago, for like a month. Yeah, a year at most, maybe when everyone was doing. Let's, yeah. let's stop. How can you call yourself a stand-up comedian and do this hacky, dumb, fucking? Especially stuff. when we can do, we can pretty much put that to bed, right? When like Dave Chappelle still has lots of specials and is the biggest comedian in the world still. That like you can't tell jokes anymore. You can definitely tell jokes. Clearly, uh, even if it is true, it's like let's we can't we can't keep with the same joke. Right. Even if it's true. We got we got to move on. Right. You know what I mean? Not that we would ever run jokes into the ground here on I've never in my podcast. life. <laughs> frankly. <laughs> and I think if anyone would agree it would be that uh Boogie would have something to say in support of us uh, not ever running jokes. You think the Boogie ground. has something something to weigh in on this? I never did. Oh, he never did. Oh, he never did. <clears throat> um so yeah, rub people wrong. It's just not funny. I was like, okay, where'd that come? That was his opening line. Bro. I was like, okay. I mean, all right. So was a, he trying to do a like a uh, like an icebreaker by being super offensive and yeah. then pull back from there, or was the rest of it hacky like that? No, the too? whole thing was very. The whole thing was extremely uh, chauvinistic and weird. Just like sex, talking about like sex with the late. Uh, with the huh. ladies and I don't he's know like, the he's whole trying thing. To pivot. It was very broy. It was very broy. I think mm. was... he's trying to uh, possibly pander to a he different said, demographic. I guess he said it in a variety me. interview. He actually said, "I don't pander my career to women." It seems like he almost took issue with that. 
He says, I would argue that this special is way more for the guys. Mm. So that was something, I guess, that was pre, uh, preconceived. Uh, here's some of the examples of tweets. The way women catapulted my, Matt Reif into popularity, and the second he gets a comedy special on Netflix, he immediately betrays him with a joke about domestic violence. So people are taking a special offense because her, his career has been yes. primarily fueled by a female fan base, which yeah. he's And I, I think there, that on. is probably true to an extent. Yeah, that's a major component, but also the way he responded to the criticism, which we're getting to, was insane. Yeah, we'll get, so to, we'll get to that as well. Again, I don't think that it, you can joke about domestic violence. I, I think that theoretically you can joke about pretty much anything if it's done well. But obviously that's the hard part about being a stand-up comedian, right? Is, right. Is handling delicate topics mm -hmm. classfully. Yeah. That is... And it... Uh, Hank Green actually had a really good take on this, I thought. A comedian ruining his relationship with a large portion of his fan base because he wanted to be like all the other boring-ass Netflix special you can't tell a joke, yeah. uh, tell a joke anymore. Crowd is there actually just depressing. And specifically, we're talking about like jo uh, Roganites. Yeah, you know they're all the same. They are all the same person. <laughs> it's like they all the same. Com Joe Rogan is ruined comedy. I'll say it. <laughs> He's <laughs> fucked. He has turned comedians into this up silly archetype. Of reactionary losers that are both too fucking sensitive and also super fucking mean for no reason. Well, how bad do you have to pee right now? Uh, let's see. This person said, I think Matt Rife's special is so bad because he's trying so hard to prove to himself and other men. He's trying to prove himself to other men through misogyny. It's desperate and sad. Fuck Matt Rife you. looks like a Glee cast member. Obsessed. Derogatory. <laughs> he looks like, yeah, made of plastic, just like Glee. <laughs> Matt Reif's the kind of dude, and I mean this with peace and love. When he's like 50, he's going to look like Simon Cowell. <laughs> like, I don't think he's going to be able to age gracefully. I'm he's interested. He's going to fuck his whole face up with crazy plastic surgery. He's going to be looking like Mickey Rourke in a few years. <laughs> Mickey Rourke looks good compared to Simon Cowell, man. <laughs> or he could take the <laughs> Brian, Brian Johnson route. Mickey Rourke looks pretty wild. Let me see. I guess I haven't seen a picture of him in a while. Mickey. He's pretty, it's pretty rough, bro. Yeah. But, you know, in the case of Mickey Rourke, I think he's a good guy, right? I mean, he has a, is he? I don't know. Weird ass Instagram account. I Weird. don't know enough about Mickey Rourke. Oh, right? dude. What is, what the, mm. Yeah, dude. Yeah, a this lot is how I there. remember him looking. It's like, yeah, he's got plus fury, but he looks like I was like man. midway through the transformation. So this is full. Okay, I see. It was it was Iron Man 2, Ricky. His career almost like came back. Like the wrestler brought him back and then Iron Man 2, but then it just went. Didn't dumb. happen. Yeah. Also, something that's so fucked up. Here he doesn't look like plastic surgery. He looks like a normal dude yeah. kind of here. Doesn't he? Uh, that's not the worst picture of him, yeah. Uh, what, what was that, Olivia? That's um, crazy that that's him. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like my aunt. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey, shout out Mickey Rourke, who looks like he's just stuffed the bombest Thanksgiving turkey for my... <laughs> that auntie can stuff a Thanksgiving turkey, boy. He's my favorite aunt. <laughs> Auntie Rourke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my golly, gee whiz, dude. Holy. Okay, no comment, I guess. Oh my god. <laughs> we shouldn't make fun. We shouldn't make fun. <clears throat> well, this shirt. Yeah, well. Yeah, we shouldn't make fun. Oh no. Um, what did you what did you what were you saying, Olivia? Oh, sorry. Um well, to bring us actually back, I guess, I th just think it's so crazy that his joke, the punchline is that she deserved it. Right. Right. So, yeah. The, 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 yeah. The, the joke is that it's just offensive. Yeah. He's like, I'm just being offensive. There's not really a joke. There's no meaning yeah. in the joke. Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't play into his intelligence or his humor. Like, it's literally just mean. 
It's just mean. That's the joke. Mm -hmm. Is that it's mean. And I, I have to imagine the intent was more so to to be shocking right out of the gate, um, to sort of set the tone for the rest of the special or whatever. Um, which is why I asked if the rest of the special was like that. But you said <laughs> I mean I watched like 50 minutes and I was like I'm not feeling it. You're out. Yeah. 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 But well. let's see. Um. Yeah, Drew. Uh oh, Drew Affalo went after him. Uh oh, you're busted now, buddy. Hey, uh -oh. I want to talk to y'all about something I think is pretty relevant, topical, if you will. Oh, For those three of you minutes. that may I be curious, my mentions are absolutely fucking flooded with clips from a very specific comedy special, and you all know which one I'm fucking talking about. No need to tag me anymore. I'm good. I already have an astigmatism in each eye. I don't want pink eye either. <laughs> In case anyone's curious, no, I'm not fucking surprised. Not even a little bit. You're telling me a man. Here's the thing. I'm sure that what she's saying is awesome, but I don't want to watch it for three minutes. There it is. She's funny. I, I'm a fan. I just, you know what I mean? I want to get on with it. It's getting late. Um. Who's Ohio and Skibbity? Um. Even guys in that. So, in that. Uh, I'm just kind of out on stand-up com uh, comedians in general, as a as a genre of people. Yeah, uh, not I guess not as a genre of people, but um, as a format for comedy. I watched a lot of stand-up growing up. I was like really into it. I never like aspired to or had an idea of wanting to do it, but um, but I don't know. I just watched specials all the time. I did growing too. up. Yeah, and uh, I just think the format is kind of tired. Frankly. I think it's like sketch comedy in that it's really hard to mm -hmm. be really good at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like an absolute unicorn to be someone that can actually be on stage for an hour, mm -hmm. captivate audience with um, not just funny, but also interesting content. There's only three people that could do that for me. Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor, and Mark Maron. Other than that, I've I'm never out. Mark Maron's good, huh? He does more storytelling and like... Dark jokes, <laughs> but um, he's very uh, much like realizing that, yeah, these Roganites, if you will, are kind of ruining it. They are. They yeah. are, dude. They're yeah. ruining it. Yeah. And two of them that you named are not doing it anymore. So it just kind of. Right. One of them's dead. One's dead. And the one other of them's is like semi retired. Doing Netflix movie. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Eddie Murphy, boy, that is a, that's probably the best stand up comp. Comic of all time, eh? I mean, AB and I always talk about his specials like all the Dude, time. They're, they're crazy. They're, they're the crazy. best. Like the best. I think. Yeah, I think stand-up comedy is definitely at a low point right now, than it than it's been in a long time. But There's I, some I, out there I, that I, I still enjoy, but I, I just don't like. I used to even go to comedy shows a lot, and I I, don't, I, I guess COVID is kind of what broke the momentum of going to them, and uh, I just. Not really motivated to do it anymore. I feel like there's got to be a movement coming up soon where, like, you know, a counter movement to this Roganite bullshit that's infected the brain of comedians. Yeah. I don't know. The problem is that Rogan has turned into, like, this uh, kingmaker, this gatekeeper of comedy that somehow every fucking person uh, that <clears throat> wants to make it in comedy needs to go through Joe fucking Rogan. Yeah. Um... So there needs to be an alternate universe where people that aren't alpha bros that live on egg yolk and cow semen uh, <laughs> can do stand-up specials. There's a lot of comedians that I really like, but I like them like in podcasts. I find them funny like when they're just sitting talking, but their stand-up <clears throat> I don't like at all. I think that's what we're seeing with Matt Reif. Mm. His crowd work was very is very good. Mm. Uh, he's very quick, and but but I'm learning his comedy is sophomoric i think it's like basic and not that funny or interesting it's it's a it's a different art it's a mm -hmm. different in discipline entirely you know what i mean i i don't know but anyway he posted uh to if you've ever been offended by a joke i've told then here's a link to my official apology tap to solve your issue and then you tap and it takes you to special needs helmet Bro, Bro, but what? Look, look at his <laughs> fucking shoes, man. Homie's wearing the, the fuck? He's wearing the fours, dude. Yeah, it's a special needs helmet or lightweight, soft, durable, well ventilated, and offer unique comfort 
Fit Plus. Uh, this, I didn't know this was a thing. Medical shop. I mean, I know it's like a. Yeah. It's well. a tro It's a trope. <laughs> but is the special needs helmet real? Apparently, it is. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> and Matt Rife says that y'all should be buying one. <laughs> if you've been offended by his jokes, whatever. <laughs> he's 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 doing the Roganite thing. Yeah. He's he's trying to switch teams. I mean, it seems calculated, right? Like, yeah, he must have somehow just. Uh, didn't wasn't happy with his audience despite it being quite large from what you're saying i mean i think that's the thing is it doesn't it seems like this is the thing you do to get attention and to uh you know even if it's negative attention to kind of like get yourself out there it didn't really seem like he needed that it sounds like he was wildly successful super he was like the comedian yeah so it's i think very he... odd to just kind of do this out of nowhere i think that Ultimately, um, um, what's his name? Green. John Green. Hank Green. Hank Green had the no. had the best take about it. It's just he's ruining. Yeah, it. I agree with that he, one. he's he really is trying to pander to a or I don't know a male audience for some reason. He wants those men. Um, yeah, maybe his audience made him feel like demasculated or something. Stupid. Could be, yeah. Or, or could maybe, be. maybe he felt that way all the time, and when he got the bag, I felt like comfortable financially. He just decided right, he to can, like, ditch go audience. face a mask off, which is too. It, it like... could also be like again, he was on Joe Rogan, and the just based on the highlights we've seen, they got a lot of views. It could be also like from external sources, like all these dumb fucking alpha losers, insecure little manlets are making him feel like, oh well, whatever. You just entertain women. I feel like people who with a with a large female fan base and comedy are treated as like not not serious you gotta make mm -hmm. the not funny. you gotta make the dudes laugh so, so maybe he's feeling some uh ex some forces from from these egg yolk fucking drinkers <laughs> the seed oil boys the seed oil freaks exactly to uh to make the dudes laugh so hopefully the dudes are giggling out there brother because the ladies ain't and that is that.